This is the Patek Philippe Calatrava 6119G001 and it is the dress watch from a famous watchmaker Patek Philippe. In today's video, I'm going to answer your most frequently asked questions about this watch like, is the pricing justified? Can you even buy this at retail? How accurate and, you know, wearable is it really? And many more of these questions. So let's get started. Right, as always, let's lay down the hot facts so, you know, we know what we're dealing with here. So this 611 9G case is made from 18 karat white gold with a diameter of 39 millimeter, a lug to lug of 47 millimeter and a case height of 8.8 millimeter. The original Calatrava, which was first released in 1932, used to be way smaller with only a, I think, 33 millimeter diameter. So we did, you know, came quite a long way here. The case is water resistant up to three bar, has a very smooth mirror like polish with a softly beveled edges. I mean, this is a Patek. And will curve down lugs compared to its previous model, the 5119, which has been discontinued to, you know, pay homage to the original 96 reference of the Calatrava. Patek themselves call this dark color on the white gold version a charcoal gray, and it has a satin like vertical finish with gold applied hour markers, of course, the far hands, and a small second sub dial at six o'clock. So, overall, a super clean, symmetrical, and simple dial layout. The bezel is very classic in its design and showcases this pattern Patek is already quite known for. It's called a Clou de Paris, which is basically a hobnail guillotte design. And, you know, though not typical for a Calatrava, the case back is see-through, so you get an unobstructed view of the manual round movement, which we will get into detail in about a minute. The 6119 in white gold is usually attached to a classic black alligator strap with a matching white gold pin buckle, but this one right here I got on loan from my friend and watch dealer Max Rothfuss, who selected this nice velour leather strap to go with it, which I honestly prefer to the black because it does not, you know, contrast it so harshly and it makes the gray dial look so much smoother for it. If anyone here is interested in it, he is selling this exact one in his online shop right now. It's a full set and includes the original strap, of course, so no worries. He ships internationally from Germany and his website is in English too, so make sure to check out his office. I will put a link to this watch and his shop in the description box down below. So yeah, thanks again, Max, for letting me borrow the watch for this video today. Right, now that we've got the heart fixed down, let's talk about the movement because lots of you out there wanted to know how accurate it is, what perks it has, and how it, you know, kind of contributes to the overall wearability, which I will talk about in a second too. So, first of all, this is a new caliber being used, which was introduced with this Calatrava in 2021. The in-house made 30 to 25 PS now has a twin barrel movement, which you can, you know, kind of see hiding behind two of the six bridges in total Patek has used here. Each bridge is massively decorated with the classic, you know, Patek finishing, and it has now an increased powers up of 65 hours instead of the 44 hours you got with the previous Calatrava. Patek Philippe usually names its caliber according to the measurement. So the first part is the diameter followed by the thickness of it. So for this one, we have a 30.4 millimeter diameter, hence the 30, and a thickness of 2.55 millimeter, which I think, you know, is a pretty neat little fun fact just on the side. Uh, as I've mentioned before, this is a manually white movement, so there's no rotor to power it. And it also includes a hacking second for a more precise and easier setting experience. Its accuracy is at about minus three to plus two seconds within a 24 hour time frame, which is, you know, well within the norm and something I would you know, consider really accurate. Okay, let's get down to business and talk about this wearability. By far, the most questions I got about this watch were about how it wears, especially on you know, small wrists, and if this is a watch that is actually wearable as some, you know, sort of daily watch, given everything like the case material, the design, etc. First up, let me say that this is a comfortable watch, which I guess goes for most dress watches since they tend to, you know, be much lighter in weight and are mostly worn on a leather strap with, at least to me, is always the more comfortable option compared to a steel bracelet. But given the 47 millimeter lug to lug paired with the design of them and a 39 millimeter in diameter, I am having a hard time recommending this one for smaller wrists. Like I said in the beginning, the Calatrava started out with a 33 millimeter diameter and worked, you know, its way up to a 39 millimeter. But just the previous 5.11.9 was only 36 millimeter in diameter. And I'm really bummed about the fact that they decided to, you know, increase the case size for this one. Doesn't make it impossible to wear for smaller wrists, but since dress watches look best, in my opinion at least, when 
you don't have this oversized look on someone's wrist, I would, you know, suggest you better have a wrist circumference of about 170 millimeter and above to, you know, give the K shape enough room on your wrist to, you know, make it look nice. Either way, besides it being made from white gold, which is why you should be a bit more careful with it because of the softer material, I could totally see this being a watch that can be worn every day because, you know, thanks to its very minimalistic and I would even say tame dial design, it can go with most outfits and fit into most occasions, I think, very easily. I mean, you can see it for yourself as soon as you pair it with the strap that is, you know, a bit less, um, let's say old school, like the black alligator one it comes with. Uh, originally, it easily becomes a very casual looking watch, which is something I would rarely say about a Patek. And given the fact that it has a power reserve of 65 hours, which is almost, you know, three days, it makes it easy to incorporate this watch into a watch collection with only, you know, one or two other watches that rotate daily. Of course, this does not give you the, you know, freedom of something way more robust like a diver. Um, since you only have three bar water resistance and, you know, another strap. I also wouldn't take this one golfing or to play tennis just because I wouldn't want to risk damaging the movement and then having, you know, to come up with the service charge from Patek. Just don't need that. So yeah. And now that we've got that covered as well, let's quickly talk about the pricing and availability. At retail, this one goes for about 32,000 US dollars, depending on, you know, where you live. For both the white and, of course, the rose gold version of this watch, the good news is that overall this watch is selling for a bit, you know, below retail, depending on its condition though, you can get an almost brand new one for just a little below retail too. So that's that. Most people, you know, focus anyways on the high pieces from Patek, like the Nautilus or the Aquanaut, or, you know, the really complicated ones, which are also super hard to get. So the way less complicated and um, let's say an agitated classic that is the Calatrava, is comparably easier to get. If it is worth the money or not is a more nuanced question. With all things luxury, a very subjective one too. I mean, yes, you can factor in things like, you know, the material being gold and the craftsmanship that goes into watch, but ultimately all things luxury like this watch are overpriced in a way. So you have to decide for yourself if you think spending almost 30K on a watch like that is justified or not. Lastly, I quickly want to touch on some alternatives to this dress watch from Patek because I did get quite a few comments about how this one, you know, compares to similar watches from other high-end watchmakers like um, the Zaxonia from Alain Gonzone or a Master Ultrathin from Georges Le Coult, for example. A comparable Zaxonia in a white gold case but a way smaller diameter of 35mm would be almost half the price if you get it pre-owned and since I am super biased here, I would say that this might be the better option for most people because of the overall end result of what you get, the whole package being, you know, a very similar looking watch from a well-respected watchmaker for way less money. If we look at JLC for their Master Ultra Thin, you could even go below the 10K price range for a very similar looking dress watch, though this one would be a steel case, not quite gold. It is obviously more affordable, but personally, I would say that the JLT alternative lacks the flair if you know for right next to Calatrava and yeah overall feels like a bit I know like an unfair comparison these two but yeah they do look similar so ultimately when going for the look only there are lots of other options around which are way less expensive but the Calatrava remains one of the most classic dress watches and if that is the feeling you know you want to go for which is very important in this case there's really nothing else out there like it and so here we have it your most frequently asked questions and the answers about one of the most classic dress watches out there. Now, you know whether or not this might be a good fit for you, if you would be better you now off spending your money elsewhere and what to expect when wearing it. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. And again, a big thank you to Max from Watches.com for letting me borrow this really fancy Calatrava. And if you would like to see more videos like this one, I recommend subscribing to my channel as I post new videos about watches and watch related content every week. So yeah, that was it. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.